While Raspberry Pi is struggling to handle rising demands for single board computers due to silicon shortage and scalpers keep selling their products double of MSRP, Big 3 Tech decide to fill the void with their new Pi version 1.2. That is what I have today on my table. And without further ado, let's just take a look at this new device. Inside of the box, we have Big 3 Tech. Thank you. Finally, we have a duck because in my last video, people <laughs> were complaining there is no duck. Good. We have SPI cable. I think that's what it is. We have a heatsink. It's nice that this board is actually comes with one and you don't need to buy a set of heatsinks that we usually do with Raspberry Pi. The Wi-Fi antenna. I would like to see how this board will perform without uh, using this antenna, just with built-in model. Some sticker and the board itself. Let's open the bag and see what actually we have here. Just to be clear, Big 3 Tech makes a lot of products for 3D printers and that's how we going to scope this video. We're going to talk about features that um, this board can use on 3D printer. And so one of the nicest features here, you have opportunity to power this board from 12 to 24 volts directly from your 3D printer power supply, which can make your setup significantly cleaner. I don't know why we need AR sensor here. Does any of you control your 3D printer with um, AR device? It will be very interesting to see. Here we have a Wi-Fi model. Specification doesn't say anything about Bluetooth on this board, so I will take a look after installing the software on it. It's just running a regular Debian uh, version of the Linux. I really like that we also have opportunity to connect 5 volt fan to cool the board and it's very nice that we have a heatsink. This board is powered by H616, and I think origins of this board is uh, Orange Pi 02. It's powered by USB-C. We have micro HDMI here. We have CAN connector, but this CAN connector requires separate CAN model. Inverted GPIO, so be careful if you wanna just uh, use it with other Raspberry Pi devices, so they are not compatible as like just drop-in replacement. This board does not have CSI camera port for Raspberry Pi cameras, and that's a bit of a loss for me because I have plenty of those CSI cameras, so you can't plug in it here. You don't have DSI display, not a big deal for me as I also purchased a Big 3 Touch screen and you can use SPI connection, it's right here. I really like color GPIO pins and USB-C powered board. Four USB 2 ports and Ethernet port. On the other side, we have microSD slot. At this point, board goes for around 35 bucks without a tax, and I hope it's going to be able to compete with its main competitor, Raspberry Pi 3B. I think that's what Big 3 Tech was aiming to replace. I want to see easy input shaper with no issues, running clipper with no issues, and have opportunity to run camera with high FPS. Overall, assembly quality of this board is very nice. Big 3 Tech usually does not chip out on the components. You have very sturdy, nice connectors. I hope those are not gonna degrade the quality in being heat it up all the time. Now I'm going to apply the heatsink. So the goal is to cool off the CPU and the memory. I really like that this board have separate Wi-Fi connector, which can help people who run their printers into the basements to be able to connect Clipper via Wi-Fi, which is super nice. And my hope is that this board also will perform well without the antenna if your printer close to the router. And I'm going to test it both with antenna and without antenna to see how well it performs. At this point, I have finished the configuration of this device and it can be used now with my 3D printer. And let's plug it in. While it's loading, I will explain how easy it is to set up this board. It's nothing more complicated than regular Raspberry Pi. You go to the Big 3 Tech repository, you download the image with Etcher or Raspberry Pi image writer. You use one of those SD readers, write the image with your computer over the SD card, then open the SD card, modify config file to set your Wi-Fi name and your Wi-Fi password, 
and also in the same place there is the environment config file that will allow you to enable screen. In my case it is uh, big 3 page TFT 35 SP1. It works only with Compute Model 1 and Big 3 Tage uh, new board, I think. One of the most important things in this step to have this antenna connected, because otherwise in the mid-range and long-range, board will not be able to connect over your router. All of the setup is finished and I'm going to connect this board to my Warren Zero via UART and see how it works. So I've been trying for a while to set up same time screen and use ADXL probe to run input shaper on this board, but for some reason I can't get it working. I have played with configuration, follow the instructions, but keep getting this here. It, either my ADXL sensor is not working because um, I've been throwing it all over the place all the time, or some of the configuration does not work. Because I don't have another ADXL sensor, that's the way it is. Maybe someone in the comments will help me to figure out what was the issue, but for me, unlocking the SPI uh, screen is working perfectly fine. That means the SPI bus is working fine. If I go to the settings and unlock SPI 1.2, that's the name of the port, the screen stops working and no ADXL and it still doesn't work. Or maybe I pinned it out incorrectly. So leave your thoughts in the comments below. Just to show that, printer is actually running fine with this board. That's what we have connected. You can see out there, the camera is working and everything else is working. Perfect. And that's how Big 3 Tage board looks next to Raspberry Pi 3B. One of the problems you can see right away that because we have AR sensor here, GPIO pins were moved a bit higher and one of the mounting points is had to be pushed up too, which kind of weird, so they are not aligned perfectly and you will have to use custom holder for this board if you want to mount it on 3D printer. Overall board exactly the same size, cooling solution in this case came up with the device which is very nice, super cheap but makes a device right away usable and this board overall mirrored compared to Raspberry Pi. The dimensions are very close to each other and board pretty much looks like very similar to Raspberry Pi. And that's pretty much it. Consider subscribing, like if you like it, dislike if you don't like it and I see you at the next one. Bye bye.